I'm calling this meeting of the Town Council to order. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, Councilor Linda Amon Smith will be joining us by telephone tonight. Good evening, Councilor Amon Smith. Yes, sir, I am here. Very good. The first item on the agenda is changes to the agenda. Does anyone want to make a change to the agenda? No change. Okay. No changes. Then uh, next on the agenda is council comments. Councilor Cano. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I just want to say the past week has been um, we're going to go rough on social media. Our community has not been kind to each other. And it's really sad because it's the holiday season and you would think people would be nicer, but people have been downright cruel to each other. And so I'm just saying, you know, if you really have something to say that's important to say to your neighbor, maybe you should say it to them face to face instead of putting it out there for the whole community to see. Um, the main one for me is, can we stop bashing our town employees? Our town employees work very hard. And sometimes they have some circumstances that they're dealing with that we don't see as the general public, that they're trying to deal with so that we don't have to see them as the general public. So, you know, just keep that in mind before you decide that they're lazy or they're not doing their job. And, and you know, tell them thank you instead of being mean to them, please. And in the spirit of that, happy holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Councilor Ray. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to... Thank you, Mr. Brown and um, Mr. Marshall, and of course, Chief Portillo, for allowing us to use the side by side during the live parade. Um, I don't want to offend anybody with my little speech I'm going to give here, but we had an incident. Somebody took. Um, a flag and I got I didn't know anything about it and I got called on Sunday morning and they explained to me what, what, what went down and my response to it was that I wanted responsibility for it because I didn't know what was happening if I offended anybody or if we our group if offended anybody please accept my apologies because we had no idea what was going on on the other side of the thing is if this is part of history. It's history that we don't want to, want to remember, but it's part of our history. Every civilization, including Mexicans, Americans, you name it, Indians, we have all suffered some sort of retaliation by, by each other. We live in a society now that we want to cut through each body everybody and we do and if I would have known that this person was going to be in there I would have said something I don't think I would have said you can allow it because I'm in no position to tell them what's right and what's wrong it's up to the individual this flag may offend somebody to me it doesn't offend me it's just a flag we complain about a lot of things, but yet there's people out there in America that burn the American flag and nothing is ever said about it. Nothing. Now, would people be offended if we were to fly a Mexican flag or a Japanese flag or any other flag? I had a talk with Ms. Sarvey today and uh, I explained to her that um, what I was going to say today and I hope the people accept my apologies for, 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 for what happened. It's not our intent to do something like that. It's never our intent. There was also on social media that um, there go those guys on the side by side doing the wrong thing. We didn't. I, 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 thought, I, I thought it went well until I got a call on, on, um, on Sunday. And now, I think it was blown out of proportion by the news media. They, they could have said something nicer about it. They could have said uh, different headlines, but 
that's just the way it is. And again, thank you guys for allowing us to do it. And also, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And no more turkeys for anybody. Make some brisket. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Council Raymond Smith. I don't know if I can follow that impassioned speech. Um, I actually want to echo somewhat what Councilor Cano said and encourage everyone in the holiday season, which sometimes is stressful to treat one another with kindness, compassion, and generosity of spirit. And I want to express appreciation for all of the volunteers, all of the folks who worked on the Light of Christmas Parade, and all of the town staff who spent many hours working on it, too. So just thank you to everyone who worked so hard. Thank you. Councilor Edison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo... Uh, the comments that have been made by Councilor Conn and Councilor Simon Smith, it is a time for for forgiving each other and for holiday spirit and, and really it's about love this time of year. So um, I did want to thank Councilor Ray for the color guard, the Vietnam veterans color guard in the parade. I thought this year was especially nice the way they marched in unison. You could hear them. And on top of it, they actually attached flashlights to the holes of the flags so that you could actually see the flags and well done thank you for your service and everyone who participated in that um, it was just people really enjoyed being able to see you all this year um, it's nice to have the lights on the flags so thank you council ray thank you thank you and i will relay the message to the country. yeah it was really quite wonderful and everybody was commenting on it uh, around me um I also want to echo Councilor Raymond Smith's comments about uh, I think everybody that worked on the parade. I know that there was some people were a little bit offended by one particular flag, but at the same time, you know, it's a holiday parade and it's all about making sure that people have a good time and we're just going to, we'll leave it at that for now and just be kind to everyone. I'm going to echo everyone saying happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, everything that's coming up and um, I agree that it should mean no more turkeys but brisket or you know some sort of uh, you know uh, ribeye you know that that's also a, a good mean so I also wanted to comment a little bit further on um, last time I talked about um, that uh, the chief and I have been working together and I know that we'll be working with the rest of the council to really try to work uh, cooperatively with the community to really make sure that um, that if you have anything that you would like to talk to the chief about, he has an open door policy and um, you have the option of going directly to the station and speaking with him or you can call um, if you have any tips on anything anything you want to discuss with him about concerns in where you live or whatever you can call and leave a message for him to call you back and the phone number is 575-538-3723 and part of this is to make sure that you understand that you don't always have to go through central dispatch if it's something that you want to talk to him in confidence about he, he welcomes that and we really want to get the community to work together um, to combat uh, crime in our community, domestic violence, you name it, um, drugs. We want to work as a community, not just as separate neighborhoods, but all of us together in Silver City. So, so please, um, you know, you can just walk in. You don't have to make an appointment. Um, you may be asked to, but if you just want to walk in and see if you can talk with him, he is there to do that um, and I know that he has a report later on and he'll reiterate some of this but I just really want to encourage you Chief Portillo has really done a, one, a lot of wonderful things to integrate the community and to do community policing and this is just another extension of that and um, lastly since it seems to be a tradition whenever we have a resolution regarding a municipal election to be held my council seat will um, be up in March of 2019, and I would like to announce that I will be running for re-election. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Any other comments, Councilor Gray? Thank you, Mayor. I forgot, as usual. 
I also will be seeking re-election and hopefully that hopefully that I can get voted in again. We have some things that we need to fix or keep on doing and I think we have a very good council. I, I, I really do. And we even have a better staff, including Mr. Scavron. <laughs> Thank you. Any other any other comments, Councilor Cano? Actually, I'm going to call out the member of the press that was a little bit late, and just let you know that you may want to speak with Councilor Ray after this meeting because he did make a very good speech that you missed that might you might be interested in having in your paper. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Okay. Next is uh, approval of minutes of the November 13, 2018 regular meeting. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Edison. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the, the minutes of the regular town council meeting of November 13th, 2018. We have a motion. Is there a second? Councilor Connell. Second. A motion second. Is there any discussion? Uh, All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public input, and I see that no one signed up. So we'll move over to the next. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll let you give public input. Sure. I apologize if I apologize if Councilman Ray already addressed this, but there are a couple comments that I would like to add to tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the display this weekend was abhorrent. Uh, hi, my name is Nick Prince. I'm a uh, Citizen District 2, Silver City. Uh, we're in the company Binary Circuits and the new project Future Forge. Um, there's been an underlying threat of very ugly, very hateful elements that have made up our society since its inception. And for every conversation I've had to fight back uh, in public and private these last few days here, I want to make a few things known here. Um, these displays are not questions of freedom of speech. These are not questions of you know, whether or not an individual has a right to be able to engage in society in whatever way they so choose. These things and the people that are responsible for hosting these things, all power be to Main Street. I wish to actually affirm the work of Ms. Charmaine Wheat, the absolute most. She has done so much as a member of the business community, as a citizen of Silver City. I have seen so much effort and so much wonderful work come out of her and seeing how much our volunteers have had to take on. Um, the individual in question for this past weekend's offense um, needs to be known. Uh, we have had to, on the ground level in this city, have to fight against a lot of issues and a lot of inherited problems of racism, cultural trauma, and this is not something of a freedom of speech issue. Again, this is not an issue that goes on what individuals allowed or is not allowed to do in our society, but it was completely inappropriate. And whatever power may or may not be vested in this state socially, we need to make sure that we are standing up against this. The threat of what we have as far as white supremacy, white nationalism in this country is something that cannot be ignored. Not after what we've seen in Charlottesville, not after what we've seen in this country in these last few years here. And to see somebody try to come up and argue that this is for the idea of rebellion. At best, this is an idea of rebellion against the authority of our government, the authority of our state, which I am not questioning. I actually think that there's a lot that we've been able to build out and figure out and make better together as a people. But from its inception till now, the Confederate flag has always been a symbol of hatred. It has always been an idea. If you want to go back to the Vice President of the Confederate States, the entire point of the Confederate States was the supremacy of white people over black. And this is something that we need to recognize as being something that is endemic, as something that we're seeing in this city, which we are all over this country, as something that we need to make sure that we are creating a hard line against. The cost of democracy is eternal vigilance. And to allow these kinds of displays to be one who has hosted this kind of hatred and demonstration of hatred during a children's Christmas parade in our community. This is not nothing. This is not something to be swept away. This is something that we together have to understand is a part of our society. And we need to stand up against it. And I really wish to question the hosting, not Main Street body. I'm really interested in questioning where the sources come from, who this person is, 
and being able to levy some social force, that this is not something that is ever, ever okay in our society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're not supposed to comment back after public input. I just wanted to make a, I just wanted to say something when I had said earlier. Okay, go ahead. Sir, with all due respect, I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the blame for that because I did ask the town council people, the, the chief of police and the town staff to allow us to do the, the ATVs and I got permission for it. If I offended you, sir, I apologize to you because it's not in our intentions to do that. It was never in our intentions to do that. We didn't know who the individual was and I don't want to find out. It happened and I'm sorry. It won't happen again. If I would have been there, I don't know if I would have said don't do it or do it because I'm in no position to, 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 to say those kind of things. And again, sir, I apologize if we offended you. Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is a report. Mr. Brown. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. I was tasked to, task to give a report on uh, stats for hands-free texting while driving along with uncovered load citations. I can tell you as of from January 2018 till today, there's been 45 citations, citations issued. Um, this does not count any um, verbal warnings and it does not count any written warnings. I can give you stats for 2017. For the whole year, there was 42 actual citations issued. It was a right now we're at 45 citations. As far as uncovered loads go, we're only at eight citations. And these eight citations were written in the month of October and November of this year. Do you have any questions or comments before I go on? Do, uh, do you have any estimate of uh, the number of uh, warnings? That I, just, uh, just kind of an educated guess based on previous history. You know, and I really can't answer that. I, I don't. I'm not. I won't be accurate on it. It's hard in our system to get the the warning count. Um, there's really no. I really have no capability of getting it. Um, the only way that I can do it is to manually or keep track of it on a stat sheet. Um, but our CAD system is not capable of pulling up written warnings, so I couldn't tell you. I couldn't and give you an accurate. I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting that you manually do it. I just wondered if you just had a an educated guess based on previous. Data. Yeah, I can't answer that right now. I don't know. Okay. Any other council members want to comment or council business? So um, I, I I do have a concern because we do see so many people. I mean, I'm stopped at a stoplight and everybody around me is texting or they've got a phone up to their ear, and I know that it's really hard to even give warnings or citations when you're in a marked car because they can see you coming and the phone gets put down. Um, I do know um, from a number of people who told me is that there is a, some, uh, I don't know if it's a particular state police officer or there's several that have a tendency to sit on certain places that they aren't necessarily seen um, on Swan and they are, they're getting people under the state, uh, you know, hands free you know, no, no texting, no cell phone use, but, but I think our municipal one is a little bit harsher, um, thanks to Councillor Ray, in terms of the, uh, you know, of, of the uh, fine and, and progress, you know, what happens with the fine, but I'm just saying I, I think at some point it's, it's disturbing because I was sitting behind a young it looked like it was a young lady today at the stoplight and the light turned green and there was no movement and I was pretty sure the head was down and that's what they were doing was texting and all I could do was honk because I had other people behind me that were honking but I'm thinking you know this is something where 
I have to call central dispatch, take the license plate number down. You know, sometimes you can't see them because they're sitting next to you and say, you know, I saw this person and I'm willing to stand up and say, yes, they were on the phone, but it's my word against theirs. I mean, I'm at a loss for what to do because we do have signs throughout town and they do tell uh, the students at Western, incoming freshmen, they remind them because I asked them to do that. But it, it's, it's blatant and it's really prevalent in here. You don't see it as much in Albuquerque, you still see it, but this is like almost every other car is on the phone or they're, they're like this with the phone rested on the, on, you know, on the steering wheel and then you know they're texting. So I, I'm not sure what you all can do to even combat this, that it's so prevalent. We've had discussions in administration and the level supervisors um, to try to come up with different ways, see what other departments are doing our size to impact this, this what we have going on. So we're, um, we're still uh, brainstorming and discussing it. I had a good conversation with the chief today, and you had some exciting news about a potential grant that could address this issue. Yeah, this is a grant that we've been getting for the past few years, and uh, we haven't had in the last few months. We're renewing our Safety New Mexico grant. Um, what that does is it gives us money for selective traffic enforcement, and we can use those funds as, as far as overtime goes for the officers to impact certain areas in the town, impact certain violations. So that is our plan. It's approved. We just need the final signatures. And as soon as we get those funds in, that's what we plan to utilize that funding for is, is for text and driving. Okay, great. Any Thank other you. questions for the chief? Thank you, chief. About a couple more things, if I can uh, do a public service announcement. Uh, I understand the, the holidays are coming up. Um, I want the public to understand that please try your hardest. At this time of year, our thefts tend to go up. We're, right now, we're really trying to prioritize to keep the thefts down. I ask that the public really, really be mindful of the surroundings. Any suspicious activity, please report to Central Dispatch or you can leave a tip at the police department. If you're leaving out of town, you can let us know down at the police department or Central Dispatch to do a frequent patrol of your residence. Um, if you have a trustworthy neighbor to watch over your house, I highly suggest that. I highly suggest that you keep your windows, doors to your residence locked at all times. Everybody has a habit of going out for a couple of minutes and then, you know, it only takes a couple of minutes for the, for the thefts to happen. So I ask that you be mindful of that. Any visible property, and I know this is hard because we have a, the Christmas tree, we have the presents within windows. Um, just try to keep real valuable items um, that, uh, visibility, so they're not visible. Um, also packages, I want to talk about that a little bit. We do, we notice a few packages are starting to get stolen. Um, if you can have somebody pick those up for you, a lot of the, the drivers will drop them off at the doors if there's a way that you can sign for them, so that way um, they don't have to just drop them off at the door. Um, I just wanted to let the public uh, know to be mindful of that. Also the vehicles, I know we're all, it's cold in the mornings and we all leave our vehicles running. Um, I'm guilty of it, we're all guilty of it, but uh, just be really uh, aware of your surroundings. Try not to do that. Um, any valuable items in your vehicle, please don't keep them in there, especially your purses. Um, a lot of the trends that we see is that they're gonna look for um, easy targets. So I ask that you lock up all, all your vehicles, residents, and if you have trustworthy people that can watch over your property, I just highly suggest that. Now one more thing is I want to touch base more on um, the federal agencies that we're, we're trying to start to utilize. They are trying to adopt more of our cases. We are trying to push more cases to federal agencies, um, which brings harsher penalties. So that's our goal, trying to get them to adopt more cases that meet criteria. Most of the time criteria is going to be involved with firearms and drug activity. So I just want the public to be aware of that. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Mr. Brown, any other reports? Yes, Mayor, I've, I've got two, two uh, reports. Uh, the first is, uh, uh, as you all know, uh, we have prospectors uh, coming up at the beginning of uh, December. And that's where we go make our present presentation on our priorities <coughs> for next year's legislative session that starts uh, 
middle of January. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I had to turn in what our priorities were. You know, we had uh, adopted our ICIPs um, earlier this year. Uh, so uh, what I've submitted um, is, as our priorities for this next year, is a $400,000 request to complete the construction of the concession stand and bathrooms at the uh, Scott Park baseball field. Another $400,000 um, for right-of-way acquisition on Little Walnut. Um, just recently, I've, I, we've identified um, some funding opportunities uh, for the construction, completion of Little Walnut from uh, her phase two end, ended it around Chavez Lane to the city limits. And uh, But we need to be prepared for prepared when that funding becomes available and so we'll need to have that right away acquisition in place uh, we, we we're asking about four hundred thousand for that and then another hundred fifty thousand dollars for sidewalks um, if the counselors have any other uh, requests they want me to to look at and maybe present uh, please let me know uh, before next week um, so do you have any comments on that right now if you be okay with it so, um, Alex, uh, sometimes uh, there's presentations about um, nonprofit or entities that um, state that um, we're going to uh, support their um, financially and as being as a fiscal agent for those entities for various requests of dollars that they're asking for. Do we have anything like that? The uh, only one that we've, we've uh, talked to is Main Street for okay. the downtown plaza, for Main Street Plaza. Okay. They is that the restrooms or is that? Um, uh, no, the restroom, uh, uh, they're already ordered. We actually okay. have this one secured for the bathrooms and the sewer lines and water lines are already in place. So that's already, uh, so they are asking for completion of the construction of the downtown plaza. In fact, one of the, the um, uh, a, a little section of land back there that was privately owned, uh, we've actually um, finished negotiations with that owner and, uh, and we're going to be able to acquire that property for less than $12,000. And, um, and they're going to take a big uh, tax credit, I mean, a write-off for the donation of the remaining balance. So that's, been, that's very positive. So the town will, will have full ownership of that area back there. So, yes, that's the only one. Um, that's the only one. We have worked with, um, talked with the schools. We're supporting their, their um, Benante Mirano uh, request because that's also uh, a joint, uh, jointly operated facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, but our specific requests are Scott Park and uh, specifically the the uh, right of way acquisition for Little One, because uh, if we get that in place, that's a close to an eight million dollar project that we hopefully would, could get funded. And if the county, because uh, it's a joint project between the town, the county, and the Forest Service, to complete a, a Little Walnut from Chavez Lane all the way to a Little Walnut Campground. So uh, we're working on that, and uh, that's one of the, those things. Next is the uh, sanitation services. I want to explain uh, some of the issues this, that's been going on for the last two months. It's like we've been sort of hit with a perfect storm. Uh, first, what happened two months ago is the supervisor re retired. So we went through the process of replacing him, which meant we promoted somebody from within. We ended up promoting somebody within. We were already short-staffed um, in drivers, so we've that put us two drivers short-staffed. Uh, we hired so a new one, and we had the the we had two new lesser experienced drivers driving the garbage, the trash pickup, and then the more experienced drivers doing recycling because uh, we needed the more experienced drivers back there because they had to learn. Uh, their pickup was more sporadic and it, and it took more knowledge to, to get the pickups on time. Uh, but uh, a month ago, uh, we're, we're short staffed with the lack of a supervisor. And uh, so we've been having, we're struggling to keep up with the, the trash collection. Uh, we've done things like uh, move the more experienced drivers from recycling to trash. Uh, that 
we did uh, at the beginning of last week and it started working out very very good that first day or two we did real well then on the second day one of our garbage trucks started on fire one of the recycling trucks so we was parked at the at the uh, at the city shop and uh, what we're finding is it looked like a, a electric short under the cab of the of the truck so um, last week we did work to um, uh, we've got a new truck that will be here tomorrow that we're leasing for the short term uh, while we replace uh, the truck that, that burnt. So um, we are interviewing two drivers tomorrow. Hopefully if, if they um, meet the requirements, we'll get them on, get them working right away so we can get uh, staffing levels up. Uh, one of the issues that we're having with the, the uh, missed pickups is that Previously, when we're fully staffed, the supervisor follows all day long the garbage trucks, and they respond. And he responds to calls, and he re goes out and replaces uh, broken trash containers. Well, because of being short-staffed, he's actually having to drive the commercial truck, and so we have nobody to follow the drivers and and, and verify everything that's being picked up. So we're relying on customers calling, and that's what's making things. It's just compounding, and it's gotten worse and worse until last week when we sort of caught up, but then it just blew up in our face again. Uh, so um, please be patient. Uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks with the new drivers and the new truck, we'll get things back to normal. Any questions or comments? Uh, this has been a nightmare for the last two months. Uh, I think our city personnel deserve a big thanks because yeah. I've seen them working even after dark yeah, I, trying to catch up. And, yeah, it got to a point where I just told them that I, they all needed to stay out until it was completed be, because we were getting so many complaints. And and then with the short days, it, it even makes things even harder. And thank you for your leadership and trying to stay on top of this. I think you've done a great job under difficult circumstances. Well, hopefully very soon will be things will be uh, corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, under new business, item 11A, which is the approval slash disapproval of one special dispenser permit application and a waiver of NMSA 1978, section 60-6B-10 for alcohol sales near a church for the Society of Mining Engineers Christmas Party at the Murray Hotel, 200 West Broadway, Silver City, New Mexico, on December 15, 2018, with alcohol service from 4 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Liquor license holder, Dow Enterprises, LLC, Q's Southern Bistro, LLC, number 28098 101 West College Avenue, Silver City, New Mexico. Mr. Quintana? Uh, oh, there we go. Um, so it's for the Southern Mining Engineers that work there at the, at the mines. They're just doing their annual Christmas party. They asked me to cater it and provide the bar. We will have uh, security, same thing that we do at the convention center. So it's the same rules, um, just a smaller group. So it's pretty simple, just our typical bar service that we usually do. I don't know if you guys have any questions about anything for it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the general public? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Ray. I move to approve of one special dispenser permit application and the waiver of NMSA 1970 section 60-6B-10 for alcohol sales near a church for the Society of Mining Engineers Christmas Party at the Murray Hotel, 200 West Broadway, Silver City, New Mexico, on December 15, 2018, with alcohol service 
from 4 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Liquor license holder, Dahl Enterprise, LLC, Hughes Southern Bistro, LLC, 28098, 101 West College, Silver City, New Mexico. Thank you. Second, Councilor Cano. I'll second that motion is seated. Do we have a motion and a second? Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. nay. Motion carries. Next item is 11B, the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2018-27 for the regular municipal election to be held on March 5, 2019. Ms. Mackey, you would like to address us? Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, this is our election resolution. Our next election will be on March 5, 2019. For counselors in District 1 and counselor in District 3 for a two-year term. The one uh, voting polling place on Election Day is at the Silver City Women's Club, our usual place. And the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. that day. Absentee voting will begin on February 5th and will end on Friday, March 1st. Early voting, that's the in-person voting that comes into City Hall, that also begins on February 5th, but will end on Saturday, March 2nd. So we have an additional day for early voting, and that's at City Hall. Those persons that are interested in voting in our election must be registered with the Grant County Clerk by February 5th at 5 p.m., the date for candidates to declare their candidacy is Tuesday, January 8th, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in my office. If they miss that date, there's an, another date to declare as a write-in candidate. It's the very next Tuesday, January 15th, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And the casting of votes will be recorded on the same vote tabulator machine that we're accustomed to using. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the general public? Do I hear a motion? Yeah. Councilor Tom? I move to approve of resolution number 2018-27 for the regular municipal election to be held on March 5th, 2019. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Bettison? Ms. Mayor, a second the motion is stated. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Anne. Councillor Connor? Aye. Councillor Ray? Aye. Councillor Amon Smith? Aye. Councillor Benson? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is 11C, the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2018-28, adopt and recount slash recheck costs for the regular municipal election to be held on March 5, 2019. Ms. Mackey? Yes, Mayor and Councilor. Each year we typically adopt a, the estimated cost for a recount and recheck. Uh, before we did it per the Municipal Election Code, but that was repealed. But it was based on the state's canvassing board's policy anyway. So now we're just adopting the state canvassing board's estimates for recounts and rechecks. And I'm asking for your approval. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion? Council Bettison? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve of resolution number 2018-28, adopting recount recheck costs for the regular municipal election to be held on March 5th, 2019. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Cunningham? Mr. Mayor, I will second that motion as stated. Motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please, Ann. Councilor Bettison? Aye. Councilor Amon Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Cano? Aye. Unanimously in the affirmative, motion carries. Next and last item on the agenda is the discussion 
and vote on whether to cancel the regular council meeting scheduled for December 25, 2018. Does anyone wish to have a discussion or make a motion? <laughs> Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, cancel the regular council meeting scheduled for December 25, 2018. Okay, is there a second? Councilor Bevison? Mr. Mayor, I second the motion as stated. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if, if we didn't know the distance between where you are and where we are, we could count the delay and figure out by the speed of sound, of light, how far you are. But we know where you are. So. <laughs> So, motion carries unanimously. This concludes the business of the town council. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, council. I want to make one more comment, if sure. I may. Merry Christmas, Ms. Cano, Benison, <laughs> and Smith, and you, Mayor, and the rest of you guys. We enjoy it. I move to adjourn. I second the motion as stated. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Aye.